Hi, this is Professor Cummings, and it's been a while, so I am coming with a new video. And this one is going to be on four bar linkages. And I wanted to discuss, uh, we're basically work through an example using a, a four bar linkage. And really going through a lot of the rotational motion. Now, what I like to show is that image that we see here in the corner, or on the left side of your screen, you know, it's obviously it's a, a piston uh, isolated, so it, all you can see it going through the combustion chamber or the cylinder, and it has a crankshaft. Let me see if I can fix this here to a good pointer. So you got this this rod here, this linkage here that's rotating, and you got this here, which is basically another uh, joint which is going straight up and down. And you've got this joint here in the middle, the, what would be the connecting rod. And so what those represent are three different types of motion that we're going to look at in our example. So I just want to give a little review of that one. Uh, the first is translational motion, which describes this area in the piston. You know, when a line or body remains parallel to its original orientation throughout the motion. All right, the next one rotational about a fixed axis. So basically you're just going around in a circle. Right? So again, when a rigid body rotates about a fixed axis, all the particles of that body, except those which align on the axis of rotation, move along a circular path. Again, that's another very important thing to keep in mind in our example. And then you've got general plane motion. That's the connecting rod. And that is the uh, point that's really going to kind of compose a lot of what we're going to see in, in this example. So it's a general plane motion, a combination of translational and rotational, and rotational motion. And you can see it, it's, you know, there is a combination there. It is translating, much like the, the first one, much like the piston, and it is rotating, much like in the crankshaft. So let's go ahead and look at an example of how we're going to take those equations and combine them in order to find out how to find both angular velocity and translational velocity of everything inside of that system. So before we go, we're going to be using this nomenclature IJK. So and how the signs line up. So I times J brings you a positive K, but J times I is to a negative K. You know, and again, it doesn't matter which direction you're traveling. And that tells us, you know, what, whether you went positive or negative and how the, the, the calculation has to be done. And the method that I have always learned to use that keeps me straight is I write IJK, IJK twice, you know, alphabetical order. And if I'm moving in the, you know, to the right, the sign, the result will be positive. If I'm moving to the left, it's going to be negative. So I to J to K is going to be a positive k. But j, well, I'll start to this one, j to i to k is going to give me a negative sign. And that seems to work. I know a lot of people can use that. It's a left-hand rule to figure it out. I've, that one always has been kind of a thing that throws me off. But if that works for you, then so be it. And then also keep in mind, this is our our coordinate system are the direction of positive going up is positive going to the right is positive and going counterclockwise is positive so now let's look at that example so here in this example you have the velocity of the slider block c I should have a space there is four feet per second so here we have this let me turn this into a pin it's four feet per second You know, up this inclined groove. So this is very similar to how we saw the piston in that little image. You know, determine the angular velocity of links A, B. So here's A, here is B. So this is link A, B, and link B, C. Right. So we want to determine the angular velocity of both. Right. And the, excuse me, and the, uh, the velocity of point B, you know, and then this would be a translational velocity of point B, 
at the instant shown. So the translational velocity of point B is a key thing to keep in mind here. It is the joint that connects links A, B, and B, C. Also, because this link A, B is purely rotational, this is a, a fixed point here, the only thing it can do is rotate, you know, clockwise and counterclockwise. You know, and that is the connection between this one, which can actually, it can go through a translation, and it actually has to go up here. So you're actually getting that combination. Another thing to keep in mind is they want to know at the instant shown. So what that means is we're looking at a tangential velocity at B. So this is the tangential velocity, and this is basically an arc. So now we're just looking at the tangential velocity going in the I direction. So AB is going pure rotational about this fixed point. C is pure, you know, going, the, the block is going pure translational, although it's going up at a 45 degree angle. Here's the 45 degrees. But BC is doing general plane motion. It's going a combination or global uh, translation. So it's going a, a, a rotation and it is translating at the same time. So if we look at this and we create a free body diagram, here we have this the slider block, and it's got an X and Y component, I and J. There's a rotational component of the angular velocity of BC. And here we have the motion that's being translated between AB and BC. So let's move forward. All right, so we can look at these equations and put them together. So we can get the motion of, of CB and say that it's going up that 45 degree angle. And that's four, which is the velocity, remember, of C. And it is going up 45 degrees. So cosine 45 degrees in the I direction, excuse me, to the right in the I direction and uh, 45 in the um, J direction. So these are the X and Y components of how this, um, how this rod is actually gonna be moving following that, that slider block. So that's VC. Now, we can also describe VC a different way, or VC sub B, or VC to B, excuse me. And that is the translational velocity of B plus the angular velocity of BC times uh, that radius of one foot times the angular velocity. So you're doing the combination or the summation of both of those. those are, so the angular velocity times the radius plus the translational velocity of BC. So since both of those actually equal V C sub B, or excuse me, V sub C B, we can equate these two. And since things are broken up into their I and J components, we can actually start solving from here. So here we have this broken up, and I just you know multiply this through by one I, which again you know, I times K gives me a positive J. You remember what that little rule that I showed you. So now we've got a little more simplified equation. So we've got two I equations. There's some two I components. And we've got two J components. So what we can do is set, oh, also we have two unknowns. Two unknowns, and we'll also have two uh, equations. All right. So we'll be able to solve this simultaneously. So first we're going to look at the J components. So four feet per second times the sine of 45. So this is the vertical component. Time is equal to the angular velocity of rod BC. And that just comes out to 2.83 radians per second. So now we can also look at this now breaking up at the, the I component. So 
4 times the cosine of 45 is equal to VB, and that equals 2.83 feet per second. Right, so that solved our angular velocity of BC, and it solved the velocity of point B. But now we still have to find the angular velocity of AB. So we have what's going on here. Let's solve for that. And we also have the radius coming from AB. So let's go ahead and solve and get the angular velocity. So we'll link AB. Now we've got all that is is the uh, the translational velocity, that tangential velocity is equal to the angular velocity times its radius. So 2.83 is equal to the angular velocity of uh, omega sub a or b to a times 1, 2.83 radians per second. So this is Professor Cummings. Uh, thanks for watching and thanks for waiting <laughs> for the semester. I'm starting a new semester this summer, so I'll be making videos a little bit more regularly again. And uh, talk to you soon.